The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. This is the Wednesday edition, Wednesday, June the 19th. Am I right? Is this the longest day of the year? The shortest day out there in the Southern Hemisphere? I can't remember. It feels like it should be. Huh. I wish they'd extend that. I wish they would make the longest day of the year somewhere around like the end of July. Oh, that would be great. I don't know how they organize it just to get it on the 19th. There must be some some legislation that they can use here. I mean, they legislate everything else. Why not? Uh, so uh, let's do a couple of things. I, yesterday I mentioned that I wanted to talk just briefly about uh, the Mile High skyscraper. Remember, I, I, I take it very seriously. Um, man's construct, this icon uh, that generates uh, essentially a fixed object as the uh, piece de resistance that, that demonstrates a particular era like the Empire State Building paper signed in the very month of the top of the uh, market in 1929. World Trade Center, uh, 973, 74, it just goes on and on and on. Du uh, Dubai, it's called Burj. I uh, always forget what it's called. It's not Dubai anymore. It's called, they changed the name because there was a crash right there as they were before they were supposed to open the tower. There was a crash and they changed the, 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 the title uh, from Burj Dubai to Burj. Oh, I call it Cal Cal Khalifa, I think it was. Not, not sure. Anyway, um, so anyway, Saudi billionaire Prince Alawalid bin Talal, you know, he has a lot of uh, city, uh, I think he's still got the city shares and um, he's just a, a tremendous investor here in the United States. Great believer in the capitalist uh, uh, methodology. Uh, he's looking at the world's largest cities, including Shanghai, Moscow, London, New York, as possible locations to build a mile high skyscraper. That would be the world's tallest building so far is inviting uh, real estate developers uh, and uh, to team up with his investment firm for the project uh, wants to do it in one of these countries and looking for a good partner uh, it's incredible because you see to do that you have to have just like you could not under any circumstance get the Apple iPhone to be the Apple iPhone, the way it looked, so perfect, so absolutely like, uh, there's no question in my mind that in 100 years or 200 years' time, of course I can say this because I won't be around, but I, I'm 100% sure that in the museums uh, around the world, they will have uh, the, uh, the iPhone, the design, spectacular design, essentially a microcosm of everything technologically that could be done to produce that instrument at that time with the genius of Jobs' uh, initiation. You could not do it. Just as I, I remember reading all those articles in the 1920s when I went back and perused by Microfish all, all the articles I could on the 1920s and took a, a, just a whole bunch of Microfish pictures and all. I've got a huge uh, collection of these things, um, which essentially said, that un t until Otis developed the elevator to be able to get the multitude of, of uh, stories, you could not get, you couldn't go from the flat iron building, let's say, to something like uh, the uh, um, CBS, well, I always think CBS, the Chrysler building, the Chrysler building, which was then surpassed by the Empire State without the elevators, same way as um, you could not get the Petronas Towers in Malaysia uh, to, uh, to, to, to that height without incredible technology, the same way as that they, you started using shock absorbers in buildings. Well, right now, we probably do have or are very close to having the kind of construct where, think about it, a mile-high building upwards, not sideways, but upwards, how do you get water to the top floor? I mean, just think of the equipment. How do you how do you get everything up to the top floor? Um, this is an amazing feat. So 
it's an icon and a time freeze of man's hubris, I guess you could call it, but a, a kind of a pat on the back. And uh, remember um, when ever you look at something of the magnitude that is involved here, what you always have to uh, contemplate is how, just as in Boston, when I came to Boston, I suddenly saw this one very, t I saw the Prudential, a very tall building, and then I saw another very tall building on Beacon Street, um, fairly in those days, and in America, on the, on the East Coast, modern is not like the West Coast, as or in South Africa. Modern was really modern. I mean, you knock down old buildings and you build modern, oh, real architects were there, not these cookie cutter guys so uh, I noticed a very tall building on Beacon Street I said wow I wonder when that was done and what the time frame was and how right at that moment all those ordinances were changed they're always changed at the top and they managed to squeak and, and then you get this massive building and then nothing happens for a very long time because all the constricts, constrictions and constructs come back again all the rules so um <laughs> Full tanks on the roof, I heard. <laughs> Good one, Mitch. <laughs> so I'm going to do a couple of things right now. I'm going to run the numbers. The Dow's down 10 at 15,307. There's nothing we need to do. You know that, you know, just hanging around until the Fed comes on at 2 o'clock or so. Uh, Compedex, Compedex is up to 3481. S&P's down 2 at uh, 1649. Gold is up 6 at 1373. Silver's down a little bit at 2164. Platinum's down. High grade copper's back at 3.1. You've got crude oil down a tad, but bonds are up are down 9.30 seconds, and that's going to be most important. What happens to bonds? What happens to the dollar? Remember the dollar I had a target of 80.27, uh, um, 80 I think it was, 80.37. Let me just check that out. Dollar index, TXY. Well, we should be close. Yep, we're very close. Now, let me move this one away. Um, 80.26 is the 200-period exponential moving average. All right, let's go to a couple of things. Number one is there are a lot of things going on TFN. Go to the front page of TFN. And you've got uh, uh, a new presentation by Bud. You've got uh, a Steve. I see that Steve's got uh, uh, a paper that's there. Uh, always fabulous work that Steve does on, on um, uh, different techniques that he's put together, and uh, that looks great. Actually, I had a laugh when I saw the, uh, I saw the, uh, the front page there because um, uh, the trend is your friend. Um, I'm going to show a chart just now. I just remind me, I had forgotten it for a little while, though. I showed it just recently when I gave that workshop. I'll, I'll show it again, and, and you'll see. It's going to be a very interesting uh, web, um, webinar, I know. I mean, a very interesting article. I haven't had a chance to read it, but I'm going to show something in a little while, if I remember. Let's go to our first caller. We've got Mike in New York. Hi, Mike. Mike, how are you? Good, Basil. Um, have you ever looked at FX Energy, FXEN? FX Energy. You know, have they always had the same symbol? I believe so. I don't okay, because I remember this, but I remember it initially only because I made a mistake in wanting to type in F. Uh, uh, Federal Express, and I, a long time ago, and I had a chuckle to myself because FXEN, FX Energy, was spoken about. I've never done anything with it on this particular chart. I don't even have a notation. It's the peak A, B, C, D, E in the uh, monthly chart to uh, to January of 2005. It pulls back. It just has huge moves up and huge moves down in a very stair step way. Then it goes A, B, C. Uh, D, another peak D in the, uh, that's in the monthly chart going to the high of, uh, the February, uh, let's see, that's a monthly chart. So that's February of 2011. And then it pulls back once again. The big question is in this area where it's always been the area between three, about two and a half to four, it started a big move. Is this going to be another move to the upside? So now let me just do one quick thing. I, I was that, do you know anything about this? Was this a news-related spike on the 21st of May that went from 375, almost doubled, it went to 618, about an 80%? Yeah, no, uh, this is a company that that um, operates in Poland mostly, and they're, they're looking, there's a huge gas uh, gas reserves there that they're tapping into. Okay, now the story is coming back to me. Uh, I remember this, uh, and I remember at the time when I heard it for the very first time, I said, 
oil in Poland? That was my question. Not that I, not that there couldn't be. It's just in my ignorance. I just didn't think of it. And uh, why not? Um, so let me just do this. Let me finish up my work. Uh, you know what? It's going to be really important for me to do a little work on this, and I'm going to do it right now. I'll do it live, folks. You can see this is a monthly chart. I want to get this monthly chart on an NSB. Uh, you would think after. I must be a million times that I've typed these letters in over the years that I would not hit the wrong key. Uh, I never did ever learn the typing. I should treat it like a clarinet and just practice it as if it was fingering and clarinet. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Now I've got a much clearer picture because what I can do is I can squash the chart. I want to get a real long picture of this, long-term picture that is, and I want to draw in a, a, um, a horizontal rectangle there it is. Support level. And that will go from that low down to that low. Right. Oh, okay. Now I've, now I've got a really good picture of it. There are a couple of things that I wanted to say. Now, you're looking at this. I don't know if you have a position, but my guess is that uh, being a $4.14 stock, um, you'd be looking at the long side, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, I'm just intrigued by the weekly chart. It, there seems to be, you know, uh, a pickup uh going on here. That's the reason why I want you to look at the monthly. How is the weekly affecting and affecting the uh, monthly chart? Okay, let me let me just do a couple of things. On a purely <sighs> pictorial um, uh, relationship, anywhere in this area, uh, no, not this area, the area that it was in most recently, which was the low of uh, $2.48. Oh, it goes even lower. I'm going to get the number. I must get the numbers because I can't do it guessing. $1.30. See what happens in a monthly chart? The parameters are always so big that it's easy to mistake by a fraction a particular price point. And then when you do the work, you t it turns out to be not 3 and a half, but actually 1.30 is the low. It's 1671 with a 13 round number opening, 1671. Now I've got a nice picture. Now there are a couple of things here. I'm going to, because I know that you also like to do your homework in terms of um, just the fundamentals, I'm going to make a suggestion, and it says two things. I'm going to look at the, oh, it even gapped up with a round number monthly chart. That is really intriguing. Okay, I'm just finishing up here, doing my last cup formation. Here we go. The analysis that I would have just based on the monthly chart alone says that at $4.14, it is right now on the nine period exponential moving average. The moment it crosses that and then stays above it on a monthly basis, the greater the chances are, historically, at least in this particular case, going to a low like this, that it will not retest the previous low. So that's number one. So that means we've got to look at the weekly chart. Why? Because we want to see if the weekly chart is being impacted by that sudden up move on um, the 21st of May. Um, oh, I'm getting a good feeling for this. Okay, great. We've got a break coming up. I want to do a little more work on the, on the weekly chart and the daily, and I can do a much better uh, analysis. Folks, we're looking at FXEN. It's trading at $4.14, down $0.04. Cents. It had a big spike to the sixes the other day, and now it's pulled back to the 9 period moving average. I'll be back with Mike in New York straight after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Call free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. We're back. We're looking at uh, a stock, FX Energy Inc. It's FXEN, trading at $4.14, down $0.04 cents for Michael in New York. <coughs> Excuse me. Michael, there were a couple of things that I... Um, it wasn't the chart pattern that I was looking at. More than thinking through... What could be done here? Obviously, there's a story involved, and this thing has stories, but they last a long time once the momentum to the upside is set in place. But the, the, the rally from 2002, when it hit 130 and went to 16.71 uh, in 2005 to a peak in the Chapman wave, was very different in character to the one that took a little longer from late 2008 at two at dollar uh, ninety five let me just type that in one ninety five and it only went although it went to a peak d it had the same spectacular stair step move in 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 cup formations area like an ellipse and ellipse and it just kept going but it went to twelve dollars and twenty cents that says that the momentum of the story now i'm not sure about profits i'm just talking about the story was less impactful than the one previous and it's like an inside bar. Then what does it do? It makes another higher low, where the last, last low was $2.48. And it's had a very strong leg A to the upside, which it never had before. And that's telling me that you've got to be a little bit careful because this has a cycle of news stories. I look at that. When I look at biotech stocks and, and speculative oil stocks, I always look at the cycle. Am I looking at arch formations or 
uh, cup formations. Does it have spike to the upside that if you don't get the breakout, you've missed most of the move? Or is it something that is so methodical that it holds like the nine period moving average, which each one has done so far? Here's my recommendation. Do, do quite a bit of reading up on this. Get a, a sense that at least there is something there in terms of profits. That's number one. Number two is the spike that occurred May the 21st, did I say it was, or May the 21st. To me, because there's been no follow-through whatsoever, it was just an isolated event. I can't use that as the crux for uh, a, a leg. I can't call that leg C minus and now it's restarting. That's just it's like a done deal. Now, so I'm going to make, I'm going to call it three suggestions. One is on a fundamental basis, if you want to get into it, Start a little a nibble right here, expecting that if it takes out 391, the low of the 13th, oh, it could go back and fill the gap all the way from 375 down to uh, 363. That was made uh, on the 21st when it gapped up. That's not the issue. The second one, that's if, you, if you've done your homework and you think that there is something there. But number two, on a technical basis, Essentially what the candle has formed from the week of the 21st of May is giving me a sense that the 200 period moving average at 526 is going to be really strong resistance. But if it does get there, it's going to also act as a magnet. But if it had to break down from here and go under $3.80 to 370 in the in the next on a closing basis in the weekly chart, it's saying, hey, hold off. That's number two. The third thing I'm going to suggest is that you don't do anything and put in a, a buy order, good until canceled, on a very small position at $4.77. That means you're paying up, but you're paying on an upward moving market. You're not trying to catch a falling knife. So I'm not making any suggestions on a dip other than if you want and you've done the friend fundamental work and you think that there's really something tangible there, and I, that's not my area of expertise, I'm looking at the chart and I'm saying the only way I would then do it is I take a little nibbling position, I build on strength. But at this particular point, I'm saying to you, um, it's going to have to do something really special and it's going to get real close to the 200 period exponential moving average of the uh, of the daily chart, which is at 436, and then the higher 450 comes in. But probably the one I'm looking at right now is I I don't know if I want to buy it at 451, which is lower than the P than the the 476 level. But I would rather buy strength. Okay, I'm, I'm changing that a little bit. If there is strength, it takes it about 437 especially going to to 4.41, nibble. That's the nibble. That's all. And when I say nibble, I really mean this is not one of those you're going to buy 30,000 shares and you're nibbling at 1,000. This is, I really mean 25, just to get a feel for what happens with the stock. Also, it's a low, uh, it's a very, very low volume. It's almost like you have to book your time to to buy it so that's my recommendation i'm going to put it down and just keep it on my watch list but i don't see anything yet technically that says i see a breakout to the upside other than there's news and that news is filtered by them i suspect so i hope that helps you yeah great basil thank you very much thank you very much for calling always appreciate it we'll go back to we'll go to ernie and dearborn straight after this break dow's down 13 sb's down one the Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you now is the perfect time to open up an account with nadex nadex the north american derivatives exchange is a brand new completely regulated chicago-based exchange and unlike most other exchanges nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform which also features real-time charts and full customization capability one of the advantages of trading with nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Dow's on that. S&P's down 147. And uh, we have online, we have Ernie in Dearborn, Michigan. Hi, Ernie. How are you? Yes, sir. We've, we've discussed this uh, SRPT previously. It's got an interesting pattern here. Uh, over the last week, we've kind of gapped up a little bit over the last congestion period and uh, so on and so forth. And there's a lot of things about it that I guess I'm kind of curious about. I'd like your thoughts, please. Okay. So, folks, we're looking at Sarepta, uh, uh, Sarepta yeah, Therapeutics, yeah. Inc. Um, they're involved in cancer research, I believe. Um, most important... No, uh, muscular dystrophy. Oh, 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 MS, that's right. Oh, of course I should have remembered that. I, I, in fact, I, I should remember that. Um, muscular dystrophy and um, uh, just an absolutely debilitating uh, disease. It just it lasts for, you know, people actually survive for a very long time. Just it, it, the body just, oh, absolutely melts away. It's just, it's really a... There's a very interesting story. I don't want to digress, but there's a lady that she's got two sons, both of which have the disease. And one of the sons has virtually come back. He can walk and play soccer with the kids, and the other kids in a wheelchair and getting worse by the, by the day. And, of course, they're waiting for the FDA to pass this thing so that they can get this out to these people before they kick the bucket, you know. Yeah, wow. Isn't that – oh, yeah, that – wow. So the, it was that potent. All right, well, that's good to hear. So, folks, let's just look at the chart. It's a stock – in fact, it was something else. It had a different name, and it went all the way down to the – Pennies. It was. It was just. ABI Biopharma. Right, and then it, it's uh, they got taken out or so taken over. I don't know what happened. No, no, they just changed changed the name. 
Oh, they changed the name, and then finally everything started to come come back again. And uh -huh. uh, what's most important about this, um, it went down to two dollars and sixty cents. That's here, but actually, I remember seeing it down even lower than that. So I don't know what happened. Right, now they six for one, or one for six rather. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Oh, one for six. So now look at this. You've got a stock that's trading at thirty nine sixty nine. Oh, so that's actually six six six. It's actually at six dollars then. Yeah. Okay. Ah, that makes sense. I couldn't understand how penny stock could suddenly be up with 45 <laughs> round number high. All right. Now I understand. It's like Citigroup. <laughs> All right. So what we've got is this massive spike to the upside. And then um, in the sideways consolidation from the 200 period moving average in the monthly chart, that 45 round number high uh, saw it get cut in half down to 21.33. Now it's worked its way back to a high recently of 42.20. Uh, now what I had drawn in a long time ago, in fact I had this for subscribers and I said I want to buy this and I want to buy it down uh, under the nine period moving average in the weekly and for some reason I just kept overlooking it and it's really essentially Walk that nine period moving average. Now I this know. is the fascinating thing. At the time when I got the when I when it did the spike. Now I don't remember if it was you or someone before you. What I had said is the pattern. That's when I drew in this pattern. When it had made that doji low on the second the week, the second of November of last year, I drew this gray. I think it yeah, it looks gray in the chart. This is the middle one. Is the weekly chart. The one on the right is the monthly chart. Mm -hmm. I drawn this pattern in. And I said there is a very good chance that in this particular pattern that I've identified, I spent a lot of time in my Master Trader series, we look at this pattern a lot because some people want to know how to trade gaps. This is like a gap. In fact, what happens is it turns into a flagpole pattern, and then within the flagpole of the longer time duration, which in this case is the monthly, you come to the shorter, which is the weekly, and you can draw the rectangle, and there should be a peak A, B, C, D at least going to just below or just above the previous high, and then a pullback into the body of the rectangle. That's exactly what it's done. How I, I just got a little nervous the day that it pulled back on the 5th of June to the 3362 level. I thought if it pulled back further than that, I'd be looking at the stock down at 31. Instead, mm -hmm. what happens is moved up. So I remember he, you mentioning that, yes. This is my thinking. I don't know what the news is today for the gap to the upside. They, they, but it's they a gap went, that has... every, every, every 12 weeks, they have like an update how the, pa the patients are doing, and the patient is doing marvelously. That's why they had the gap up this morning. Fabulous. That's great to hear. Okay. So here's my recommendation. This is going to be one. Now, you don't have a position in this. You've been looking at it, but you haven't gotten in. Or I you am do? in. I am in. Oh, okay. This is... Okay, good. This is one that you are in. And so what I'm going to recommend is this. The pattern that I was looking for in the monthly chart is the one that I said if at any point it climbs back and gets to halfway into the wick, which would be at about 3162, there's okay. a chance that it's going to work its way towards the top. That's what it's done. The monthly chart stochastic is still not good, but the MACD is very good. What's interesting to me in the weekly chart if you had to ask me would I buy it based on the technicals right now, I'd say you'd buy it on speculation because the technicals are just, they are not good enough, but I they're see. okay. They're turning up, but they're not good enough. But it's okay. above the nine-period exponential moving average. Here's my recommendation. I think this is a stock, especially in the area of MS, that I think you can stay with, and you can, in fact, um, hold it as a core position. Until something goes wrong with the whether it's the uh, one of one of the trials, and hopefully it doesn't go wrong. But very often with biotech, there's a moment of stalling sure. at some point that you've got to take for granted. I like this stock. I think there's a story. I think it's in the right area. I think they are one of the, as I recall, they're one of the prime movers and shakers now in the area. So I think SRPT, which is the one that you got, Serepta Therapeutics, is a buy and hold, one of the few buy and holds that I would say as a biotech, that's one of those risks, I don't have to tell you, but it's one of those risks you take because at some point we've seen biotechs give, give back 50 to 60% in not a day, but in an hour. 
That's the problem. So, That's why I call it because, you know, it, it, it's always timing because if bad news comes out, it opens down 10 or 15 and vice versa, you know. And, by the way, their, their big see, competitor was named Provenza, and it was bought out by GlaxoSmithKline. Oh, well, that's good. I'm but, pleased but you told me about that. I remember reading about good. it. Right. I just completely forgot about it, but I do remember. Okay. I, I think they're... Pro I think that they're, they're in the right area. They're the right stock. I'm going to make the suggestion, but please don't just suddenly do it. Think it through. You've got time, even if it pulls back here. Sure. I would say you've got a bonus with a spike to a new recovery high, but it's not a new high because you really want, first of all, to take out 4220 and then 45. Yes. The moment it takes round number 45 out, it's just a whole new ball game. If nothing goes wrong, it's then got a major support in the 42 to 36 area, and that's really what you want to know as a core position. But sure. thinking about it, what I would say to you is it would not be – I don't know if you want to time things or if you want to just hold it, but taking off something here when you've got a real nice bonus out of the blue. I mean, I don't think I don't know if you expected it yesterday when it closed at thirty eight something. Right. So I would say if you want, take a little bit off, but absolutely designate that part to being put back somewhere below the low of yesterday, which is thirty six ninety five, and then okay. you get yourself a. Maybe a three-point leeway for the next time you want to enter into the stock on any position because you can use the, the the profit here as a extra bit of leeway in the second entry of a position. But I would not take the. I would only take a little bit off to say, hey, leg maybe F in the daily if the market turns down today. But this thing might be market independent. It looks a little bit like it's market independent. I think so. Yeah. I have a couple of stocks in. In my opening call, that are so far acting as if they are market independent, they're not following the news, and that's really what you want. Keep the core position, only take off a little bit, and that gets designated to going back in to this stock because I think you've got your eye on the, on the prize. Because the monthly, if this is a brand new leg A to the upside in the monthly, um, and 260 is the low, so I have to consider that it could be, um, if it goes to leg B, automatically is going to target 50, 5520 is actually the high going all the way back to 2006. Or 70, hopefully. That's what I, think you, I think you're absolutely correct if everything falls into place. But you know we want to just go step that's, by step. You've got your core correct. position. So thank you so much for calling. I appreciate thank you, that. And so congratulations. Much, Angel, thank you again. Thank you, Ernie. Let's go to Mark in Fort Collins. Hi, Mark. How are you? Good, Bradley. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Um, so I was wondering if you think, um, I was kind of looking at the different um, different uh, ETFs that, that cover all the major indices, and I was wondering if the IWM is giving you any different signal than the rest of the indices. I'm short the SPIs, the Qs, and the Diamonds, but I haven't touched the IWMs and it because they look a little bit stronger. What, what are your thoughts? Well, let me get two things right off the bat. Are you are you actually short at this particular uh, uh, moment? All of those, or you just you have been yes. short, or you are short? Yes, I am. Okay, so I I need to make just a real quick reference to two things. I spoke about this uh, Monday, spoke about it yesterday, and I'm going to speak about it right now. The pattern that I'm looking at in the E mini S&P futures is a little bit different to the others because it had a successful test of the 1591.60 low on the tw on the uh, 6th of June. That gives a chart pattern, and I've drawn it in here. I don't know if it's that clear. Let me see. I'm going to open it up a little bit so that it's clear so the people on Tiger TV can see that it might not make the M pattern. I, you know, when the Fed comes out and says something, um, it can be very meaningful for uh, 20 minutes, 5 minutes, 1 minute, or for 4 years or 5 years as they've done. So I do not want to play games with the Fed, but what I do want to say that this pattern that I'm looking at here is like a, a modern W formation. Oh, how can I explain that? It's like a lowercase h that then goes all the way back up on the right side just as it came down, like a W, but as I say, there's that arch in the middle. And I'm I'm aware of this because I've seen it. I call it the Sears and Row Sears Holdings pattern. It, it did that years ago. At, it's a high-level consolidation, not at a low, but at a high. 
that essentially takes time and not price, has a successful test of the left side low, and then starts and activates a new buy signal to buy mode, and it happens so quickly that if you are wrong, you're wrong and you don't really get a chance to do anything about it until it stops. And this, this particular move could, in fact, be a spike that takes it above the wick, the long-legged wick of the 28th of May, above 1666.75. I have to say that. Why? Because the MACD is, as we're talking right now, the MACD is 528 and 562. Uh, 528 for red. Um, yeah, the MACD is really close to turning positive, but the stochastic is still kind of lagging. But all that will happen is if that MACD opens up and has a wide beta by tomorrow's close, because the, the uh, E-minis, or in this case, let's just even say the SPX is uh, same thing. The SPX is, in fact, it's a little bit better. The SPX right now, 450 and 482, has got... The green, yeah, it's the same thing. It's just about a cross positive. If, in fact, we get a very strong bias to the upside going into the close rather than what m many are looking for is a sharp decline, I don't know how you get out in time. Now, I don't want to have to, I don't want to say to you, just get out of everything. That's not what my purpose is. My purpose is I, I always like to look at both sides and say, what would be designated as a successful um, breakout to the upside, and where would it fail? So now let me go to the IW, IWM. So you have no position in the IWM, but you're using that because it's had some of the best performance action of, the, of all the ETFs so far, right? Yeah, I guess, I guess sometimes it leads a little bit, or it has led, and I was getting a little concerned that... Um that I might need to, I just, maybe it'd be a lot safer to get out of everything and just see what plays out in the next couple of days. Well, you see, I don't want to tell you to get out of everything, and then at 4 o'clock today, the Dow's down 180 points, S&P's down 20, and you've got out a most fantastic profit. I'm only, I want to set up for you the type of action that would not just be positive on the day, but it would have follow through tomorrow, so that even if you said today, well, I can handle an upside surprise, you won't be able to handle a gap up tomorrow. That's why I right. want to just, get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's always opportunity to make back money, but not right. when it's big. That's number one. Number two is you can always, once I can tell you that if the Dow closes down 180 points today or tomorrow, the die is cast that we have a consolidation going on. We get, we're going to continue making lower highs and lower lows. That's the way it'll be. I want to look at the other side. And that's the reason why for my subscribers I've kept my positions on the long side even trying to add to the long side, but at the same time, we're looking at the short side. So here we go. The IWM, folks, this is the Russell 2000 ETF. It is the iShares uh, Index Trust. And all it needs to do is to break above 100.38, 100 which is the high of the 22nd of May. Then not only does it make a new leg up in the daily, which couldn't turn out to be leg C or maybe F, but it doesn't matter because the leg E in the weekly will be very strong and it extends leg D in the monthly chart. So it isn't just that it will be making new recovery highs. It's going to be an all-time high. Let me just double-check what I'm saying. Yeah, an all-time high. So I'm going to be back. We can spend a little time with Mark and Fort Collins. What can we do? A lot of people in the same situation. What do you do? And I'll be back. Hopefully I can answer that. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. 
the Tiger Technicians Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. Basil Chapman, Tank Technicians Hour, uh, Dallas Down Seven. S&P is uh, down one and a half, and we're on with Mark and Ford Collins. We're looking at the IWM. I've just given, this is the chart right here. If you're looking at Tiger TV, the chart you're looking at right at this particular point is the 120 minute chart and it shows you the very well defined channels the left side right side price time match oh i never got to, to do what i wanted to do earlier on was to show uh, trends but that's that came in right on the button one exactly to the, to the, to the to the uh to the 120 minute bar of the left side right side price time match at 9573 and now it's gone peak a peak b pulls back and it goes to c and it made a d this morning uh yesterday afternoon at 9980 and now it's pulling back and mark's suggestion is that mm, very often the iwm kind of leads a little bit uh it leads the market uh, in terms of the indices and i'm saying yeah but the fed is going to I need to say something here that I've always thought of. It took me a long time to get this to sink into my head. Until one day I turned around and I said, you know, after all these Thursdays, it used to be Thursdays back in the 70s, um, there was M1 and M2. Oh, everybody would wait for them, M1 and M2. And then it took me a long time until uh, every other thing, you know, the jobs report, whatever it is, there's always something. Until I finally figured out one day, you know what? I'm looking at the chart patterns. 
there's very seldom been a trend change on an announcement. The trend has already occurred. The change is in place or it's already the turn has occurred. Very seldom is the very same day the turn. So I'm going to make a suggestion here that says to me if it wasn't for the Fed announcement today, my thinking is that we should start to stall right now and that the IWM should be pulling back in the up channel towards the uh, 97.42 level, it's about 5 points from here, about 4%. And this time it should probably break and go down to the 96 area. That's just what I'm looking at when I'm, I'm looking at consolidation patterns, I'm looking at chart patterns. The chart itself says to me, hey, you may be right. But the weekly chart has nothing wrong with it. Even though the MACD is pulled back, it's still very positive. Stochastic is 79%. It's under 80%. And it's trying to test the recent high of 100.38. So you don't have the evidence there. The evidence will come if on Friday the IWM is over 100 and say 101.80 or it's below uh, 9705 to me that's evidence and then the 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 monthly extends or I say aha there's a chance now that the whole of June could turn out into consolidation for the IWM do I want to be on the cusp of that decision with a very big position on the wrong side and my answer is I've lightened up yesterday we were on the short side I took a tiny loss 10 cent loss on a, um, on, on, a on one of the short positions um, I, I have one short that's there. It's still working for us. I've mostly got longs. I will say that there'll be a better time because if, the, if, in fact, we get a trend confirmation by the, by the Dow closing down, it doesn't have to be 100-something. Even if the Dow closes down 50 or 60 points today instead of being up 60 points, I will say then I've got a confirmation that there's a good chance we're, in the, we're still consolidating using time rather than price at this particular point. If the Dow breaks out and decisively gets into the 13,000, uh, retests the recent high of 13,500s, something else is going to go on. So I'm just saying to you, I'd be a little careful. I would find a way just to hedge maybe a little bit. Yeah. Or right at the button when they give the announcement, you'll know pretty quickly. But I, being too heavy, it's just taking a bit more of a gamble that I would be prepared to take. So yeah, those are the. How often does the Fed ever say something that hurts the market? Not very often, right? Well, that's the issue. You see, I I, I agree with you, but I'm only talking money. <laughs> I'm only talking money. So I hope that helps you, Mark. I hope just to set something in place. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We've got Labor Day's event coming up. Uh, my service is the opening call. Uh, go to the front page of TFN and check it out. And thanks for being here. Have a great day. And we'll know after the Fed announces what's going on. Patterns. Profits and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar the forex market and more you'll get access to all the patterns larry is seeing in the markets plus the astro harmonics and powerful bradley stock market model that larry utilizes for less than five dollars a day an extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for try patterns profits and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks that's an 85 dollar value yours free when you register right now get larry's patterns profits and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for